tonight. That is the first ambulance. The whole world has been waiting to see this. The rescue that captivated the world. The boys on that Thai soccer team now telling their incredible story. ABC's James Longman with the exclusive interview. The days of waiting. The fear of drowning. No, no, no. If I told them that we were stuck in the cave, they would have freaked out. Then... The heart-stopping moment when they first heard a rescuer's voice. How many of you Emerging from the flooded cave, now worldwide celebrities. How many followers do you have? Uh, but looking forward to being kids again. Tonight, their stories of survival and how truly grateful they are. This special edition of Nightline, the Thailand Miracle Boys, will be right back. ago, many thought faced almost a certain death. Today, just being boys, laughing. What do you all now want to do in the future? I want to be a soccer player, like Ronaldo and Messi, my dream. Meeting them in this stunning temple in Mei Sai, Thailand, is truly incredible for me. Sawadika. After two months of covering the journey of this soccer team, nicknamed the Wild Boars. You've got people who've come from all over the country to do what they can to help. Such has this story kind of gripped people's imaginations. Rescuers continue to pump billions of gallons of water out of that cave. But look at where we are. The caves run all the way underneath these mountains here. These are the kinds of military rations that divers are swimming into the cave to give to the boys. We believe that the first boys from that cave are in that ambulance. ABC News arranged an interview with the Wild Boars through the Thai government on the condition that the topics be reviewed by child psychologists and other specialists caring for the team in order to protect their well-being. They first stunned the world in this video, illuminated by a diver emerging from the water in that dark cave. There they were, 12 boys and their coach huddled together. Well, I felt like surprised. I thought that one day they must come. We've been waiting and hoping every day, but that night they really came. So I was surprised. I was overwhelmed and didn't know what to expect. I was happy. It kicked off weeks of anticipation and concern on the outside as to if and how a rescue would happen. A daring race against Mother Nature, culminating in a life or death effort to dive them out from deep inside those caverns under sedation, all while the world watched and waited. June 23rd, the story all began in the most ordinary of ways, on this modest field here in Maysai, where the Wild Boar soccer team practiced. The boys and their coach then made the fateful decision to visit a cave, a team adventure. Tell me about what that day was like, Coach Ek. Well, we had soccer practice at the beginning. After the soccer practice, on our way back, we convinced each other to visit the cave and go inside the cave. Some of the boys, as young as 11, they're agile young athletes, though small in stature. Hopping on their bikes, they headed towards the Tam Wang Nang Nong Cave, situated under this mountain, Doi Nang Nong, or the Mountain of the Sleeping Lady. A local legend says that the spirit of a mythical princess inhabits it. Some say you can see her sleeping in its shape. Which ones never went before to the cave? Ah, it was exciting? At the beginning. Well, it was my first time, so... I felt like, let's go for it with everything, because I'm a soccer player. I want to get a new experience in my life. Little did they know, as they ventured deeper inside the cave, it began to pour with rain outside. It was the beginning of Thailand's wet season, and the chambers began to flood. 25-year-old Coach Ek understood how dangerous the situation could become. He described to me the moment they knew they were stuck 
in a cabin called the Hidden City. First of all, I got a hold of myself. I tried not to make them freak out. If I told them that we were stuck in the cave, they would have freaked out. And then you thought, I'm stuck. I need to find a way to get everyone out. And you had some rope. Uh, what was your plan? I volunteered to dive to find out if we could go through. If I could go through, everybody would be safe. At the moment, we used the rope that I brought, so I let a duel, knight, and T to hold the rope. I told the boys that if I signaled by pulling the rope twice, it meant they had to pull me back because I did not have enough oxygen. Parts of the cave became submerged with the team trapped on higher ground. So when you were inside, you you made sure that everyone was very calm. So I tried to keep them composed and tell them in a positive way that we would make it out soon. On the outside, as friends and family gathered at the mouth of the cave, searching for signs of life, the Thai government leapt into action. More than a thousand of the nation's military were deployed in the search effort, including 17 members of the Royal Thai Navy SEAL. This is a massive operation. Let me show you a little bit about where we are, because this patch of jungle has been totally transformed. There were rescuers and volunteers everywhere you look, and if you look up there, you can see oxygen tanks being stacked up outside the entrance to the cave. Those are for the divers. Other nations offered their help too. <laughs> the boys had no idea the world had rallied around to find them, holding out hope they were still alive. Instead, they were seeking an escape. On the fourth day, they began digging with rocks they found inside. And 10 days after they disappeared, weak and surviving on water dripping from stalactites in the cave, there was a surprise in the darkness. How many of you? Who went down to the water first? Well, I felt like surprised. I thought one day they must come. We've been waiting and hoping every day. Now, recalling a funny moment of misunderstanding. And who was translating? Right then, a duel was talking to the divers. Everybody was trying to figure out what they were saying. I asked you to translate for us. I told him to translate, but he didn't. So while Adul was talking to the divers, I shouted, Who knows some English? Please, translate for me. On the outside, sheer relief. Absolute elation. Uh, followed very quickly with, Oh, wait a second, now we got to get these kids out. The divers who found the boys, John Valantin and Rick Stanton, and fellow divers Jason Mallinson and Chris Jewell, belong to an elite British cave diving team with unique rescue skills. In Thailand, these volunteers come to be known as the awesome foursome. I never had to think for a second about whether I would go. I think it's human nature uh, to know if you've got, uh, got an ability, and of course you would. We always knew we could get them out, it's whether we could get them out alive or not. While the rescuers strategize, Medical experts examined the boys still trapped in the cave. Surprisingly, they were in relatively good health. My health is good. One boy flashed a V for victory, but they had lost weight. A group of Thai Navy SEALs stayed with the boys, bringing them supplies to help regain their strength. They stayed overnight with us. I felt warm. We had brothers taking care of us and giving us advice about how to protect ourselves and survive in the cave. The boys bonded with their rescuers. Who played the game with the Navy SEALs? All everyone played games. Using soil and stones to play checkers. Who beat the Navy SEAL? Everybody no. lost. <laughs> the boys wrote letters to their parents about their cravings for their favorite foods. Adul asked for fried chicken. But up in the rescue village, anxiety was rising. More rain was forecast, adding to the pressure to act fast. We, of course, are all anxiously watching that cave rescue in Thailand. A race against time to save a soccer coach and his young players. The group remained unaware of just how precarious their situation was. Like other soccer fans, their focus was on the World Cup. You supported Croatia. <laughs> but then, Things turned tragic on day 14. Former Thai Navy SEAL Saman Gunan was found unconscious on one of his dives, and he later died. So Sergeant Sam's mouthpiece fell off. He was trying to grab it, but he couldn't find it. He was trying to take out the spare one, but due to the complexity of the cave, there was no air to breathe. He really said the whole world crept. 
stood between the boys and the daylight they hadn't seen in two weeks was about a mile and a half underground obstacle course of rocky chambers, half-flooded canals, and fully submerged sections. The longest of those was 350 meters, the length of seven Olympic swimming pools, filled with water so muddy it was like swimming in coffee. I physically could not see your hand in front of your face, no matter how close you put it to your face. The boys prepared for their exit from the cave, not knowing just how risky that mission would be. Coming up, on day 16, the boys prepare for the exit from the cave. Not knowing how truly risky their rescue would be, and their life since emerging from the darkness. This is my body of proof. Proof of less joint pain of Nightline. The Thailand Miracle Boys continues. Here again, James Longman. Fifteen days had passed since the 12 soccer teammates and their coach became trapped in this dark, flooded cave. Tom Paul, today is D-Day. We are 100% ready. And finally, the time had come to make the hours-long and complicated journey out of the darkness. The boys were ready. With the help of their coach, they decided who would make the journey first. I was talking to the Navy SEAL, Dr. Bach, consulting with him about which ones we should bring out first and which ones to save for later. The Navy SEAL said, Coach Eck, you make the decision. So at that point, it was me who was in charge of making the choice about which ones to save first and which ones to save later. An enormous cache of extra air canisters were put in place and support divers deployed in the chambers throughout the cave. I'm not one to hang around in the back and amuse it at the front, so I just volunteered. British diver Jason Mallison volunteered to escort the first boy out of the cave. It would be one boy to one diver. Already wearing a wetsuit, each boy walked down a steep slope into the water. Now it was time for an absolutely critical step. Agreed to in advance by the Thai government, each boy would be injected with a commonly used sedative called ketamine by Australian diver and anesthesiologist Dr. Richard Harris. Mallinson reveals the shot is not just to relax each boy, but was to knock him out cold. I was not fully confident of getting them out alive. We didn't know at first how they were going to react underwater, whether the drug that we'd given them would be sufficient to keep them under for the flooded section. Once sedated, a face mask was strapped tightly on each one. A single leak, potentially fatal. When they start moving, their arms are moving around. There's potential for them to kill themselves. There was potential for them to kill us. But Mallinson is not one for turning back. He entered the cold, murky water with the boy for that daunting first dive stage. Remember, it's 350 meters long, three and a half football fields. After about 20 painstaking, agonizing minutes, Mallinson successfully completed the first stage. Waiting for him were two support divers who helped him lift the unconscious boy out of the water. When we realized that, yeah, the mass worked, the drug worked, after that, I knew, you know, there's a good chance we can get them all out this way. But the three had to physically carry the child to the next dive point, then swim across deep canals with rushing water. And it was actually harder in the canal sections, because once we were underwater and he was neutral and I was neutral, it's quite hard to swim in a canal and then push a, push a, an inner child along with you. After what seemed like hours, Mallinson emerged from the darkness with that first child in tow. That is the first ambulance the whole country, the whole world has been waiting to see this. We believe that the first boys from that cave are in that ambulance. <laughs> Over the course of the next 48 hours, one by one they came out, racing past us in ambulances. The final group escaping just in time before the cabin filled with water. All 12 players and their coach have made it out. It's a miracle! It's now mission accomplished. Every member of that soccer team trapped in the cave in Thailand, now free. It was 18 days since their disappearance, and the drama that captivated the world was finally over. All 12 boys and their coach alive and well. Feeling the weight of the world's prayers, they began a strenuous recovery process. The world got its first glimpse of the boys, now in the safety of their hospital beds. Now I am very fine. I am very thank you so heavily. Thank you so much. Titan, tell me what it was like 
for you to see your family after all this time. I was so happy to see my mom and dad. I felt even warmer. And then you were, when you were in the hospital, uh, you could see them through the glass. Is that right? <laughs> After more than a week in the hospital, the boys return home to hugs and cheers. And all finally getting that fried chicken he craved so much. Today, they're feeling strong, energized, ready for the future. Is life back to normal again? My life is getting better. And uh, what do you all now want to do in the future? Do you have big plans for your future? My dream is to be a soccer player. My favorite is Navy SEAL. You want to be a Navy SEAL? Yes. yes. Big dreams as well as a big following. The boys now Instagram stars. How many followers you have? Uh, 98. 98,000? Yes. I heard some rumor that he's got more than 300,000 followers. You have 300,000 followers on Instagram. Yes. <laughs> You're very famous. Yes. Something else taking the internet by storm. The Deli Alley Challenge, named after one of their beloved soccer heroes. The boys show me how it's done. Yeah. Everyone has to do it together. Uh, the fat. Yes. And the second. And the lat. Yes. <laughs> Why do you think the world was so interested in this story? Everyone loved and cared about us, like they were our parents. They cared like we were their children. That inspired and motivated them to help us. Me and the brothers would like to thank His Majesty, King Rama X, who has always helped us and brought us out of the cave. Some here believe it was that spirit said to be living in this mountain, the mythical princess who helped guide the boys to safety, thus creating a new legend. <laughs>